Hey people, welcome to the channel. It's Kieran here. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about running belts. Now I have tested loads of the latest and best running belts from all the big brands, from Salomon to North Face, Asics, Under Armour, Flip Belt, all of these guys. I've been out there doing the miles, putting in to find which are the best running belts out there over various different distances as well, looking at belts that will sort of handle those sort of easy kind of hour long runs right up to half marathons and even going beyond into ultra. And in this video, I've got a group test of seven of the leading bands out there across a range of prices with a range of different options. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you which of those I think are best value for money, also which are my favorites. I'll tell you what I think each of them might be best used for. And I'm also gonna tell you if there are any in there that I think you should avoid. But listen, before we go into the belts, one quick plea. If you like the content on the channel, if you find this useful, if you're up for more of the same, hit like and subscribe, comment, all of these things help support the channel, will help me make more videos like this. So yeah, share it with friends, other runners that you think might be in the market for a belt, all of that kind of stuff is very welcome support. But let's crack on with the video. So then what do I look for in a good running belt? Well, there's a bunch of criteria here that I've judged these on. First and foremost, you've got comfort. You know, how comfortable are they to wear? Do they chafe? Do they sit nicely around the waist? When you've got gear in them, is there any bounce? Is there any movement? Related to that, I guess there's kind of storage and capacity. What kind of things can you carry? How much gear, basically gels, phone, keys, card, you know, cash. Can you, can they take a water bottle? All of those kind of things. And then on from that, you're looking at kind of versatility. So some of the belts maybe work better when you've got more stuff, but you also perhaps want a belt that's gonna be able to cope and not move around or be uncomfortable when you've not got it full. So versatility of something that's gonna take you from those kind of daily kind of hour long runs right up to potentially going out on a three or four hour run. Durability, how, you know, are they built to last? Value, price, how much do they cost? Are they worth the money? And then there's sort of a load of other sort of things which have got extra features like key hooks. You know, can you attach your, your running poles onto them? You know, what kind of materials are they made from? You know, how strong are the zips? You know, all of these kind of things are gonna come into play. How easy are they to use? How secure does the stuff stay in the belt? All of these things have been factored in when I'm talking about these belts. So let's take a close look at the seven that I have tested. So let's start with the Nathan Adjustable Fit Zips to then. This is the cheapest belt that we had on test. It comes in at 20 pounds or $30 in the US and it comes in one size with an adjustable belt. Now let's start off with what I like about the Zipster. The first thing obviously is that price. That's a really kind of wallet friendly, cheapest on test. The other thing is I think capacity wise, you've got sort of pretty ample storage, definitely for kind of those daily runs, you know, where you've got to take a few bits and pieces and it is versatile. It does kind of scale up in terms of storage. I think you could just about kind of fit almost a marathon's worth of gels in here if you're taking maybe kind of eight gels on a marathon over that kind of course of that run, as well as the fact that it fits kind of most phone sizes in this main compartment. I've got an iPhone 12 and it swallows that quite nicely. Also, I really think the, the fabric is kind of, it's nice and soft. It's got this kind of sheen to it, which means that it's very, very soft against the skin, really comfortable to wear on that front around the front. Um, it sits quite nicely as well, so that's all good. The things that I wasn't so sure about with this are quite, you know, there's quite a few of them. And um, the first really is, you know, I, I'm not really sure. It's got this kind of really small, almost like a dress zipper. that's just a bit fiddly to get hold of. And I'm just worried about that breaking. It doesn't look like it's gonna last an awful long time. The second thing I'm not so keen on is this kind of belt buckle setup at the back. This buckle in itself, it's quite light, but it's quite big. And, you know, obviously it clips. And then we use this bit to tighten and loosen the belt. The adjustability of the belt is great because it, you know, you're not always feeling kind of the same size necessarily day to day to day in runs. And this gives you a little bit more kind of chance to sort of flex and, and change that overall kind of fit and feel as you want um, between the days. Some kind of the fixed size belts don't do that. Having said that though, I do find that this sort of sits a bit funny against the back. And then you've got this really long, 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 long tail of kind of strap that I'm a 36 inch waist. And so I get a lot of leftover kind of tail and you end up sort of having to try and tuck that away and it sort of flaps down and it can be floppy and all over the place. If you bought this, I think you'd be well advised to sort of cut it and invest in maybe, you know, stitching that over so you've got a shorter amount of overhang. The other thing that I think it's missing is a sort of simple key hook. So, you know, I would often sort of use this belt on a, on a single daily run. I'd be taking a set of keys, I'd be taking my phone, I might take a bit of cash and I might take a couple of sort of gels. And the fact there's nowhere to to hook your keys in to make them absolutely 100% secure, I think that would 
be a real benefit from this. The hooded pockets do hold things nicely in place. In terms of the types of run that I think I would use it on, I think you could run a marathon in it. I think definitely run a half marathon, but I do feel like it's a bit more like your day-to-day -day running belt where you just want to carry a few sort of key items. Next up, we've got the ASICS Waste Pack 2.0. It's 25 pounds in the UK. I don't think it's available in the US. I couldn't find a price for that on the ASICS site. So we're assuming it's not available and it comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large. So this ASICS belt is a bit more like the classic kind of flip belt kind of style. You've got like a whole single band here with some sections in it. Basically, a storage consists of one zipped front pocket. They've got a nice big pull zip on the front of that. And that's the thing I was complaining about on the other Nathan belt. That's much improved here. You've got enough capacity in the front here to take kind of most sizes of the phone, although the opening is quite tight. So it's a little bit of a squeeze to get it in there, but I can get my iPhone 12 in there. Flip it around the back. And what you've got on the back here are two hooded pockets that do stretch a little. They're not too deep though, so the capacity of these stretch pockets is not huge. And uh, I think that kind of limits overall what you're able to carry in there a little bit more than some other options that we've got on this test. The other thing is that seems a bit of a shame because you've got these kind of side sections here that don't seem to have any purpose at all. There's nothing in there. So your kind of storage capacity here is limited because they haven't bothered to give you an entry way into this side section. Something like the flip belt, which is an entire pocketed kind of tube, seems to me to be a little bit better as a solution, gives you more flexibility. Now, this is a really kind of lightweight belt. The fabric is nice and light. It's a little bit less, I guess, sort of dense than the flip belt. And that does kind of save a little bit on weight, makes it feel a little bit lighter around the waist. I'm a 36 inch waist and I went for a large in this and it fits pretty snug, but just about right in terms of kind of overall fit. Now, I think this kind of works best Again, when I'm carrying kind of a fewer items of kit, if you're carrying a phone, that's gonna take up quite a lot of storage in the front here. And sometimes you'll kind of see these belts have like an inner wall that lets you put your phone in and then put your keys in on in front of the wall to sort of separate them from the screen so there's no scratching. That doesn't have that here. So once your phone's in, a lot of the capacity really, you know, you can fit a card and some cash in there, but a lot of the capacity is kind of taken up. Or if you're gonna put gels in there, there's a risk if they break or they get sticky, all that kind of stuff is gonna be in there with your phone. For, for those kind of things, you're gonna be using these back pockets. And you can carry a reasonable amount of gels. I think, you know, probably up to sort of maybe six to eight gels in there at a squeeze, depending on the size of your gels. You can put a pair of gloves in there. You could fit a head torch in there if you wanted. But, you know, I think, again, this belt for me feels like a belt that I would use almost for my daily training runs where I'm not gonna be carrying an awful lot of fuel. I've enjoyed using this belt. I think it's a very, very solid sort of daily running belt when you're not gonna be carrying an awful lot. If you just wanna port your phone and a few other things, then this one fits the bill for that. Next up, we've got the Under Armour Flex Speed Pocket Running Belt. This comes in at 26 pounds in the UK and it's $30 in the US. Now this Speed Pocket Running Belt is definitely a belt that I think kind of fits into the category of a belt that you just wanna use on daily runs, your kind of regular kind of training runs rather than in races mainly because it's just a bit, it's a bit heavy. It's a, the band is a bit thick. The overall capacity is pretty good for storing kind of, you know, quite a lot in this front pouch. You've got one big front pouch and in the back, you've got this kind of speed pocket, which is, you'll find this sort of speed pocket set up inside a lot of Under Armour shorts and some apparel. Now this is where you're supposed to slip your phone in and then wrap this over the top and it'll keep your phone well held in place where you can get it out really quickly or other bits and pieces does have a little sort of overhang hood here so it keeps things nice and secure and in place and if you put your phone in there it means that you've got a lot more storage in the front here for gels and other bits and pieces there isn't any other storage beyond that though there's no sort of side pockets and I think you know the problem with that is if you start to cram in an awful lot of gels in here you know like a marathon's worth of gels in here the whole thing kind of bulges out a bit and it does become a bit bum baggy and it does become a bit kind of wobbly and a bit bouncy and yeah, it's just not my preferred solution. What I think it's great for though, really, you've got that kind of separation between phone and other stuff. And, you know, for daily runs, again, when you've got that kind of, every run is sort of essentials like keys, you know, maybe, you know, some cash cards, wallet, pair of gloves. Maybe you wanted to put a hat in there or something. You can do all of those things, a few gels. Um, at a stretch, this guy here will take a soft flask um, as well, if you wanted to stash a soft flask in there. So for hydration, points that's also possible i do like the fact that it's got a nice big long opening big zip robust zip also one that's kind of easy to get hold of that feels like that's going to sort of be pretty durable that zip has been so far in my runs the other thing i mean it is well built the whole thing feels really kind of solid it doesn't feel like it's going to break i think this is a belt that would last a pretty long time actually you know the strap 
is, you know, it's made of kind of stern stuff. The big buckle clips that you've got here, you know, they're not messing around at all. It's not the most comfortable on the back that, but you know, it, it's not going anywhere. That's not coming undone. The other thing, you've also got a little bit of um, adjustment, a bit like the Nathan belt here. You have got that flexibility with, the, with an adjustable waist belt here. So you can actually kind of scale it up and scale it down. And I always say this on those days, maybe where you had maybe one or two many beers last night or a bit extra pizza where you, know, you might be feeling the paunch a little more than you were the run before. You can flex that, you know, that's a good thing. And yeah, I, you know, again, I think this sort of, for me, fits into the sort of category of, it's a solid belt, a little bit more pricey. I'm not blown away by it. I'm not in love with it. It wouldn't be my first choice. But yeah, for, for sort of every kind of run essentials, you know, it's not bad at all. There is a bit of bounce. It's not the most comfortable, but, but you know, for 30 bucks or under 30 pounds, I think this one will do your job. And I think in its defense, it's definitely gonna last you a while. So I think this one would be a, a resilient one. If you're looking for a belt that's gonna last you, you know, two years plus, then maybe this is an option. Moving on then, we've got the North Face Flight Series Race Ready Belt. This one will cost you 35 pounds in the UK and $30 in the US. Now with this belt, we're really moving into belts that are kind of more designed for kind of trail and even going ultra, but they also work, you know, for your everyday runs, marathons, all of those things. So they do have a little bit of extra versatility. And this North Face Race Ready Belt is one of those that can scale up and down. In terms of storage, you've got one zippered main front pocket, and again, that will take a large iPhone and it's got pretty easy to grab kind of zipper pulls there, which again, I quite like. It's a big deal for me when I'm running long distances. I don't want to be fiddling around and grappling for, for tiny little zips. On each side, you've got one hooded stash pocket. Now those aren't hugely deep, but they do stretch quite nicely. You can fit, you know, a good number of gels in there. What's on the front here, you've got these bib number toggles if you want to use those. I don't tend to use those. I do find the fact that you can't kind of get rid of them and they're always there kind of flapping around in the way a little bit annoying but then I'm just a bit of a fussy beggar so on the back then you've got this other kind of pocket which is sort of open you can put your fingers through it and what that enables you to do in tandem with these kind of bungee cords and these other straps here is to slip your trekking poles across the back and hold those kind of firmly in place you can toggle these down to keep them sort of tightly in place on your back where they're sort of supposed to be easy easy access kind of whip them out when you're running and put them away when you're on the move truth is on the move that's not necessarily that easy to do to get them back in it's kind of easy to get them out north face also says that can kind of double up as a water pocket and that will happily kind of take a, a soft flask you'll need that soft flask probably to be full though in order for it to kind of really almost sort of stay put nicely in there one word of caution on this i went for a large in this which is what i sort of tend to do in belts i'm a 36 inch waist and this one, it still comes up pretty tight on me. If there's an extra large, I would have been tempted to go for that. It just makes it a little bit hard when you're filling it with all your items, all your sort of things that you need to carry. Everything just gets a little bit tight and a bit constricted, a little bit more so than I would like. That doesn't make for the most kind of comfortable fit. So my suggestion, if you're thinking about this one, would be maybe to, to be kind of a bit generous on the sizing. Overall though, I do find the fabric is nice and lightweight. It's nice and kind of breathable. It's really quick drying as well, which is fantastic. I really like that. I'm a big sweater, uh, also I'm running in the rain, so that helps. And when it comes to these belts, they're a little bit more kind of ultra and trail run friendly. I just don't think this was my favorite belt of all, based on the kind of fit and on a few sort of elements of the kind of capacity and storage just think there's a, there are better options out there. Next up, we've got the flip belt zipper. This is 35 pounds in the UK and $39 in the US. Now, the flip belt zipper has been one of my favorites for a long time. I've used this belt on countless marathons, half marathons, daily runs, ultras. It's almost been my go-to, I'd say for around about five years, and it's still going pretty strong. The only thing that's broken on it really is the, the zipper actually, which had one of those kind of sort of lightweight dress zippers is, is broken off, that's no good. Um, but it still works even though that zip isn't kind of closable. That's kind of still fine. That's the nature of the flip belt that you can pop things in and then fold it over and they kind of stay put. But in essence, this is kind of a really kind of simple belt. It's made of quite thick fabric and that does kind of create a bit more heat than some of the other kind of lightweight, more minimal things like that North Face belt or the Salomon. But I don't mind that too much. It's a nice soft fabric. It feels good against the skin. It holds nicely in place. And then essentially what you've got is this one kind of big front pocket that's zippered takes any kind of size phone, we'll take my iPhone, my large iPhone, you can also sort of stash quite a few gels in there. And then onto the side, you've got these different access points. Got three of them around the back, 
that basically let you into this kind of one long tubular pocket that you can fill with lots of different stuff. And that is really good for capacity. It means that you can store an awful lot of stuff in different places and get at it from different points. And everything kind of stays nicely put. With this, I've gone on ultras where I've stashed gels, head torch, gloves, you know, all essentials and had a phone in the front pocket and it's worked really fine. You also get built-in hook, great for stashing keys, car keys, headphone cases that come with the hook. That's really useful too. It's a nice little touch. And yeah, I love this belt. I think this has been one of my best ever kind of running purchases full stop. You know, for the, for the price, I think just it's a reliable, reliable kind of piece of kit. And I would kind of highly recommend that. I do think it's also got one of the big things that we kind of look for this, which is great versatility. You know, there's plenty of storage there. You can fit a soft flask in the back here if you really want a full soft flask. I never use it for that, but you can. One thing I will say is I kind of wish the sort of main phone compartment had some kind of waterproof inner just to protect your phone a little bit more, or sometimes I'm carrying, you know, a camera to film things on these runs. You can also opt for one that's a little bit cheaper without the zipper, and I don't think necessarily it makes too much difference. And there's also reflective options too for a little bit of extra kind of added safety. But yeah, overall the flip belt zipper I think is a really solid choice. Next up, we've got the Salomon Sense Pro Belt. This is 40 pounds in the UK and $49.95 in the US. It's a unisex belt that comes in various sizes from extra small to extra large. So I think one of the highlights when it comes to the Sense Pro Belt is the capacity. This is one of the largest capacity belts that we've had on test. I mean, you can see the belt itself is actually kind of broader and wider. It comes with one main kind of hooded large pocket in the front and you've got this kind of mesh that sort of stretches very minimal the fabric's very 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 lightweight very minimal that make, means that it kind of dries quickly and then on the sides you've got a couple of stretch mesh pockets either side here too those are great for you know anything from kind of cramming in a bunch of gels down to sticking in a head torch pair of gloves you, i think you again you know with these things you have to be a little bit careful about how you're putting items in there and what you're putting in there it's almost like almost like the more that you've got the better because these are open they're not clipped so if you have something heavy that might kind of bounce and, and, and jostle out then that's to be kind of considered you need to you know if you've got four or five gels crammed in there it's no problem at all they stay put but single items need to be watched that's one of the sort of shortcomings i think overall of some of the pockets of the belt because even on this kind of other large back pocket you can see it sort of flops open there there isn't a clip or anything, so those are open. So what you put in there, you have to think about a little bit carefully. That said, that is quite a lot of storage on there. And that makes this belt something that is definitely kind of ultra friendly and you can fit easily, I think, items, you know, your obligatory items where you've got a phone, you might have a head torch, you might have gloves, you know, even in the back pocket here, this back pocket will take a small kind of lightweight shell as well. You can cram that in there. There is room for a water bottle. Again, it's not something I tend to do because I just don't like that sort of jostling around. I think there are better ways to carry your water. You can put poles on here and you've got these toggles that will help secure poles on the back. That's a bit like the North Face belt. In fact, this is a little bit reminiscent of the North Face belt. These two are kind of almost head to head in terms of what their functionality offers and how you might use them. This large pocket, I do find sometimes that my phone, when I'm putting it in there, will move around a bit. There is a little bit of wobble. It depends on what else is in the belt and kind of how snug it is fitting against my kind of waist. It's Again, it's it's almost like one of those situations where the more stuff you have, the more sort of snug it fits. You can obviously see that this has got, you know, it's it's tapered towards the top. So you've got this kind of narrower section at the top, wider at the bottom, and that is there to kind of fit across the hips and around the waist a little bit more comfortably. I, I do find there is a little bit of kind of roll up and gather with this belt. Again, that that's worse almost when I've got less items in there. The other thing that I'm not 100% keen on is they've got these little toggles here to help you kind of open the pockets, but I just think they're a little bit too small and a little bit fiddly. I'd rather see something a little bit more robust. I would like to see, or at least have the option of a popper on that back pocket. You know, I don't think it's going to add an awful lot of in the weight. I know they've gone for minimal with this one, but I just think that gives you a little bit of extra, you know, it gives you an extra option with the fit security of stuff that you're going to put in there. You know, I do find this to be something that I can wear on lots of kind of much longer runs. I've done big long runs in this, you know, four or five hours, and it's been comfortable throughout that with no rubbing, no chafing. It is more expensive. I do also worry about the sort of thinness of that fabric and how durable it's going to be. I do like the fact they've got some other sort of nice touches, like, you know, if you're considering kind of carrying poles or something in the back here, they've given a small amount of padding 
in here on both sides that will just sit on those kind of backbones where you would be sort of carrying this to stop you know those nasty things kind of bumping against you particularly good if you're going over long distance in terms of versatility i mean ample storage and of course this will absolutely handle you know your, your daily runs with those kind of essentials maybe it's a little bit of overkill though for that and so yeah i think you know for most people this is going to be too much belt for you if you're just running unless you're going longer maybe if you commute or you've you know you've got this idea where you want to be completely self-sufficient even if you're just going for kind of an hour or whatever then it's great this does offer that but yeah for most people i think a little bit overkill if you're looking at ultra then i think this is definitely worth having a look at i found it to be particularly useful it is at the price year end but you are getting quite a lot of storage for that cash last but not least we have the naked running band and this one comes in at 49 pounds 99 in the uk and 49 dollars 99 in the us it comes in 12 different waist sizes now when we did a running belts review over on the run testers one of the comments that we got over and over and over and over again was why haven't you spoken about the naked band and to be honest, I'd heard of the brand, but I hadn't tested their products until I saw all those comments. First thing I did was get in touch with them and say, you've clearly got a product here that's really popular. I'd love to have a look at it. And although this comes in at the priciest of all the bands we've tested, I have to say all of those people in the comments, I think were spot on. This is a great piece of kit. Like the North Face and the Salomon, you've got a belt here that's made of a really kind of lightweight, breathable and fast drying fabric. And that is definitely to be commended. And also storage capacity wise, you've got this huge kind of pocket here at the front. You've also got another large pocket at the back. Key hook or headphones hook or torch hook, whatever for screwing, whatever needs to be in the belt when you get home to still be there. You've got that, which is great. You know, another little detail, the pulls to help you access these pockets are large rather than small. When your brain's gone and you're deep into ultra territory, those things are really, really handy. You've also got straps on the sides for attaching other bits and pieces, running poles, all of those kind of things. Integrated bib number toggles. I like the fact that these two back compartments are separated as well, so you can put different gear in different sides. And what I found really useful about this belt is the fact that you've got these large pockets, three of them, that they're kind of scalable. They, this will happily have a phone, and once it's on, it holds it nice and close to the weight. It doesn't move around, even though you've got this big pocket, it kind of stays put. But what your options are here, I mean, if you really want to, this, this is big enough to fit, almost like to fit a normal jacket and you can roll it up, definitely fit a shell in that. You can fit soft flasks in there. You know, even these back pockets as well, you can fit a soft flask if you want in either side of that, no problem at all. It will take kind of 500 mils full up easy. You could fit two of them so you can carry a litre of water in this belt. It also kind of flexes up and down really nicely. So it doesn't feel big and cumbersome and almost like overkill if you're not running with all of that gear, if you're just going out for a daily run and you just want to stick a phone and a pair of keys in there, that's also great. So I think this is where it's a little bit better than the Salomon actually. Again, a sort of narrower band, it just feels a little bit more kind of traditional, a little bit less sort of ultra than the Salomon. And I think for everyday use, that makes this one a bit of a better option. So durability wise, in terms of the kind of fabric that it's made of, it's pretty similar to the Salomon. And I do think that there are probably gonna be more durable belts out there. You know, the flip belt feels more robust. But I think for overall kind of versatility, for its storage capacity, for the comfort, for the way that it kind of lets you kind of scale up and down your kit, and just the thought that's gone into the feature set, although this one comes in at £45 and it's the most expensive belt we've got on test, for me, because I do an awful lot of kind of long runs and I want that kind of scalability, be able to store lots of stuff, I think this one would just kind of tip the balance. I do love the flip belt zipper. Like I think this one's got the versatility to take you through daily runs, through a half marathon, marathon where you want to carry a bunch of stuff, right up to ultra marathons where you're going to want to port an awful lot more obligatory kit and probably a lot more fuel. Really versatile and I think, yeah, absolutely big fan of this naked one. I recommend it highly. So there you have it. That's been my group test of seven of the most popular running belts that are out there to buy right now across a range of prices. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions about any of those belts, please hit me up in the comments below. I will endeavor to answer those. If I've missed a belt that you love using, tell me about it in the, in the comments below as well. I always like to hear about products that I may have missed or I should probably get in for testing myself. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about them. Don't forget to like and subscribe on the channel. Share this video with other people who might be in the market for running gear. And yeah, I hope to see you again soon on the channel. Uh, have a cracking day.